entrance to Wiring 1 at Garin Campgrounds. Uh, it's in a national park here. Um, I'll see if I can zoom in for you. There you go. You have to book online. Uh, you're not allowed to camp here unless you have a chemical toilet. drive down the track, go down there. Uh, if there's free campsites, I'll launch the drone and show you some of the scenery around the place. Obviously if there's people in the camps, I can't go and um, fly over the top of them. Um, and I'll um, try and see uh, what we can get. I'll uh, map all the things too, map all the campsites on the map. Um, I didn't do that before, once before, but um, uh, this time I'll actually mark where all the campsites are so that uh, in the future people can uh, know where to go. It's about 10 k's down this sand track. You'll uh, need four wheel drives and uh, they do suggest uh, deflate your tyres, it saves the track. Gara, or Garin campgrounds. <clears throat> you uh, take the road into grey and just at the end of the bitumen here uh, you go down a little sand track on the left. That's, uh, you might see some buildings up ahead of us and the flag. That's the uh, little fishing town of Grey. We might um, drive through that a bit later on, on the way out. Um, but at the moment, we'll go round and round in circles and head down this little sand track here off to the left of the information shelter. And a little bit down this track, I'll stop and uh, deflate some tyres. This track has been improved. It used to be quite a scratchy little track with uh, bushes overhanging the track and you had to bulldoze your way through it. It's part of Nambung National Park uh, where the pinnacles are so they're not too far away. If you want to like camp up here and then go and have a look at the pinnacles you can. Uh, you're allowed to fish in the northern section of the, um, the campgrounds but the southern campsites you're not allowed to fish from and there's no spear fishing anywhere. Um, there should be a little open area just up here, which is where we always stop and let our tyres down. They've closed a lot of the side tracks and things uh, on here. They've just got one track in and out now. There used to be uh, a couple of tracks going in and out, which would have been better to use, so you could have one-way traffic. But uh, you've just got to be careful of oncoming cars as you go in and out of the campgrounds now. Um, I think there's about 15 or 16 campgrounds, but we'll um, try and get and have a look at each of them. It also could be a good idea around here to um, stick up a sand flag, if you've got a sand flag you can use. This is one of the little hills, a lot of people get stuck on this hill, I don't know why. And then they just sit there and uh, spin their tyres and get bogged, but anyway. Um, yeah, if you've got a sand flag, good idea to use it around here. Unfortunately, mine's still at home. Um, this gets a bit bumpy down here too. People just chew the tracks up. Again, probably people with um, overinflated tyres or don't know how to drive up a sand dune. They just dig it up. Um, the rest of the track's not too bad. There's a few patches of cap rock. The campgrounds themselves, campsites themselves, some of them have sandy uh, bases and other ones have like uh, mulch from all the, the trimmings off the track. The ones with mulch, uh, when I camped here for a week, uh, I was on a sandy one, didn't have any problems with any of the ticks, but uh, other people who camped on the uh, the ones with uh, mulch on them had lots of problems with ticks. Oh, nicely chewed up. Probably wouldn't recommend someone with a two-wheel drive to try and come in here. Some of those little uh, hills and that do get a bit boggy and chewed up. There are nice little bays and fishing beaches and uh, swimming beaches along the area. Uh, most of the campsites are sort of just behind the dunes um, and you can hop over the dunes and spend the day on the beach or go fishing. 
last time I was here for a week. I did go fishing, didn't catch a thing. But um, you never know. There's always fish in the sea, but you just don't know where they are. The tracks used to go straight ahead here. They've all been locked off. <laughs> um, bit of limestone around. There are some reasonably good signage here. Uh, campsite 1 to 15, chuck a left. If we go straight ahead, you just go up to the top of a little uh, rock ledge. Um, either side of the ledge, there is uh, a little bit of a beach. Quite a nice little spot. And it looks like there is someone in at campsite one, even though on the uh, internet it didn't look like it was booked. So, um, oh well. Uh, you can probably see it off there just to the slight right. Uh, someone's got a shelter down there. Campsite 2 is just a little bit, it's actually just on the other side of the dunes from that campsite 1. Interestingly, he's not actually in the campsite area, he's parked off on the track, but uh, uh, we'll um, be going past there in a second anyhow. Oh yeah, he's only just put his camp up. This is uh, campsite two. This is uh, actually where I spent uh, five days up here. It was uh, very nice. First day was a bit uh, wild and windy, but uh, the rest of the week up here was really good. I don't think there's anyone in here, so we'll drive down and have a look. Uh, nope. So I'll launch the drone and have a look around this bay as well. This one has uh, sand and limestone on the bottom, so uh, if you want to put a tent up, you um, might need a um, pick or a drill just to get into the same ground in here. It's um, pretty bad. They all do have those little fireplaces too. this corner here this on the left or directly ahead of us in the film that used to be the uh, backtrack out of here it's um, all being closed off now which is a bit of a pity I think they should have made it uh, one way going in and that using that track there as the exit track so that you don't have um, not so much head-on collisions but um, getting stuck this tracks not really wide enough to get two cars going past each other it's uh, not recommended for uh, towing trailers and um, if you uh, come up against a car on this track someone's going to have to reverse a fair distance before they can find a spot to get off the track and let you past. So um, it probably would have been a better idea to um, leave the uh, inland track open and use it as an exit track. But, um, it's a nice drive, really nice camping out here and fishing, and um, 
just the road in is, or um, well, the track in, is a little bit bumpy and does have cat rock in a few spots. As you can see, just around the corner here. The only thing you can do, idle over it and just plod along. But you can see from the track in front, if I had a car coming towards me, one of us is going to have to reverse until you can find a spot to uh, let each other past. It is um, really nice along the coast here, especially in summertime. Uh, the water's crystal clear. Um, campsite 2 that you just saw, uh, there was a bit of uh, seaweed in the water there. Um, when I was here, there was no seaweed at all. In fact, the first time I came here, just as a recce for the place, uh, it was crystal clear water in there and the sand was beautiful. Uh, the coastline along here is pretty good. It's uh, really, really nice to have a look. This is coming up to campsite 3, I believe. Don't know if anyone's in here or not, but it um, doesn't look like it. We'll uh, go down and have a look. Oh, no, this is just the... Um, fishing spot. Yep, that goes down onto a rocky outcrop just down on the uh, right there. Coastal cliffs or rocky outcrop. Uh, you can fish off the top. Oh, this is the track into campsite 3. As you might be able to see by the little sign there, someone's ripped the 3 off. Must like the number. But um, I don't think there's anyone in there, so we'll uh, go down and have a look. If I get around the corner. Yeah, there's a bit of um, uh, seaweed in the water at the moment. This one's got an interesting little site. It's got a little bit of a cave type area around it. I might launch the drone again and uh, see what I can see. Oh, that seaweed down the beach doesn't look too good. Okay, interestingly, um, whilst I was at the old campsite 3, the uh, rangers came in, they do a trip up here each day just to make sure everyone's doing the right thing, um, and they said campsite 3 had been closed because there were too many ticks in it. So they, uh, you can still go into the old campsite park there and go fishing and that, but there's no camping there anymore. Uh, campsite 4 had someone in it. Uh, we'll drive past it and have a look. Well, we've got to go past it anyhow because it's pretty much on the track. You can see it just ahead of us there. And yep, more camera.
bit of a traffic jam as a, the campsite's just on the right. There's someone in it, so I'm not going to follow the drone around it. But um, <clears throat> yeah, the rangers are having a chat to them too. <laughs> so this is now campsite three. It used to be campsite four. Okay, this is um, campsite four, which used to be five. As you can see, a little bit of limestone rock there. I can't fly the drone around here because uh, there's a uh, campsite three just down the track. So uh, yeah, it's a bit too close. Um, I'll just map. And this is campsite five, another little uh, roadside camp just on the top of the dune. No campfire in this one. Nice little beach in front. Bit of a drop to get down there. We're still a little bit too close to uh, campsite uh, three to uh, launch a drone. But um, I might get out and do a uh, panorama with the camera. Just get back a bit so you can see what's in here, and I'll uh, go and take a photo. This is a little turn off to campsite six and seven. Campsite six in, is in a hollow. Campsite seven's on top of the dune. I'm not sure if there's anyone in here. Um, if there isn't, I will launch a drone on this one and have a look around. But uh, we'll uh, be able to find out as we come around the corner. There's no one in six and no one in seven, so that's good. We'll um, have a bit of a play here with the drone. We're far enough away from the other campsites to not annoy them. Oh, there is someone on the beach up ahead of us, though. So. Uh, fishing by the looks of it. Campsite 6 and 7, I just did that overfly of. Um, if you've got a big group, it'll be a perfect campsite because you can park your cars just here on the right in campsite 6 and maybe put a tent or two down there and uh, use campsite 7 as your uh, base so you're out of the way of the cars and put some nice big tent or something on campsite 7. You could have uh, quite a good party up here. Uh, it's nice, it's away from the other campsites a bit too, so it's um, it's good, it's out of the way. Alright, we'll go on to number 8. Uh, this is campsite 8 on the right. Very small little campsite. Campsite 9 is just ahead of us. What I'll do is I'll launch a drone here and get a, um, a look around shot. And uh, we'll uh, see what the beach is like. It looks pretty uh, murky in there, so I'd say there's a lot of seaweed still.
think that's campsite 10 just down there to the uh, front right. Someone's uh, there and they're fishing or setting up camp. Um, so someone's in there. Yeah. So, yep, went um, do a drone from here. It, um, it's very similar to uh, 8 and 9, anyhow. Yeah, campsite 10. It's on the rocks here, actually. Bit of a weird camp spot. Probably more of a fishing spot than a camp spot, but um, anyway, I've got to stop just for a sec and we'll get a mark. Way off in the distance, you can sort of see the island that's shaped like a wedge, which is what the town, well, fishing village is um, named after. I'll just go up here and might be able to see it better. Really nice coastline. Next campsite's actually just in front of us, which should be uh, 11. Looking down the beach, that's a pretty good view. Some days you get big waves rolling in, other days like this, and then you can get the occasional day when there's just no waves at all. And it's just so peaceful down here. Uh, I won't fly the drone at number 11 because there were people down just behind us. But um, I think you get the idea, it's um, sort of tucked away in this little hollow. Just here on the right, I'll be able to turn into it. It's only a small campsite sandy bottom not a bad little uh, spot the beach is quite nice just in front of it too but, um, it will um, mark it on the map and uh, keep going site number 12 coming up there's obviously someone in there you see a rooftop tent and a uh, flag so yep won't be um, getting a video or um, photos of this one from memory it's in sort of like a turnaround area it's um, with a walkway down to the beach a little bit tight in there, but you, obviously you can see that someone's in there, camping. I'll uh, just mark oh. us coming into the next campsite. Can't see if there's anyone in here. This one's tucked up behind the dunes, so you got to sort of walk down a little track to get in here. Campsite number 13. It's big enough to turn around in. Um, I won't launch a drone from here. I think I've got enough drone footage. I'm going to do some um, shots driving out of the uh, National Park uh, up along the coast on the way back. You're not allowed to fish here. This is uh, a no fishing zone. You are allowed to go snorkeling and uh, do all that sort of stuff, but no fishing from uh, here. 13 would probably be a good one if it was a bit stormy. Uh, we stayed in campsite 2 uh, and had some really strong winds coming in off the ocean. It made it quite hard for us to uh, put up shelters and tents. Uh, but that number 13 is in a hollow so uh, it would probably be quite sheltered from uh, stormy, wind, stormy winds and weather. Uh, not a bad option. It's quite a nice beach out the front. Just take it slow along this track. There's lots of blind corners. I don't have a sand flag on me, so um, yeah, my mistake. I left it at home. Uh, if you do have sand flags, certainly um, I'd stick one on and just drive nice and slow. Enjoy the views. Next one coming up, I think this is campsite 14. One more campsite to go after this one, and there's a, another shelter and display board at the end. Nice big open campsite, this one. Um, you get um, quite a crowd in here. Little walk track up out there, um, past the barbecue up over to the beach. So semi sheltered behind the dunes. Last campsite just here, campsite 15. This one does, um, if there's high tides and surges, it seems to get um, inundated with water and seaweed. So, um, not probably not the best uh, one to uh, camp in, but uh, it is here if you need it. And if the weather's good. All right, we'll um, go down to the information board and then uh, turn around and get back out of here. The, uh, information shelter at the uh, southern end of all the campgrounds. If you keep going the track behind me, you'll end up in some sand dunes. You have to cross them, or you can sort of weave your way down onto the beach from here uh, and then head up to or head down to Wedge Island. 
Uh, but for me, I'm going to head back up to Grey. There's a patch of coastline I want to get a, um, a film of. And uh, I'll uh, end it here.